Yeah. No, it's fundamental wiring or something. That's what I, I can't remember what the name of the video was. Well, yeah, 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 she wants to see it so she can laugh at it. A smoke yeah. test. It says something about a smoke, smoke test. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I saw that one. Well, well, as soon as I start doing wiring, I have all the wiring going wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is, is, right. is force, I like this. question number one, we get our mind on our business here. Force is measured in pounds per square inch. True, true. What do you think? All right. True. Is force measured in pounds per square inch? It could be measured in all uh, yeah. What do you think? What does it say it's measured in? It's not measured in pounds per square inch. What do you see? Lawrence got his book. How's force measured? Keep flipping and, and let us know when you find that. Then we'll let him do research while y'all are sitting around with your uh, feet propped up with your two quid on your thumbs and he'll know more than y'all when you're through. Okay, is pressure measured in kilopascals? That's one of the measurements. Yeah, you can use kilopascals to measure pressure. What do you think of when you're measuring pressure? You know what a bar is? Yeah, a bar. I'm not talking about one that you have in your living room that you serve drinks while somebody's playing pool. A bar. What's a bar? What is, if somebody told you, talking about pressure, that something was too bar, and that's too what drunk. you're going to... would be like, too drunk. <laughs> okay, let me back up and say something else. What is pressure air pressure? Pounds, pounds per square inch. PSI. Pounds. So it's measured, there you go. What is it, is it measured in pounds per square inch? Force or pressure? What are you talking about now? Okay, force is, <clears throat> force, force is measured in pounds or kilograms. In pounds. Yeah. Force is measured in pounds, but not PSI, right? Yeah. Okay, now look at this. Okay, so what does this number mean to you? 14.5 PSI. Yeah. What in the world is that about? And that's sort of a round number, more or less. 14.5 pounds per square. At sea level. Oh, at sea level. Yeah, at sea level, that's what air pressure is. The air pressure at sea level is what enables airplanes to fly. Or the air pressure at any place. you got air pressure. Air pressure is what makes planes fly, or what lets them fly. Because you've got a wing like that, and the air's got to travel farther up there to get from front to the back than it does down here. And that air pressure is pushing up on that wing for that reason. Is that why they, like, shut off when they get too high or whatever? Yeah, well, yes. First, why they... Uh, there's a bunch of reasons behind that, but we're not talking about aerodynamics. I just inserted that. 14.5 PSI equal 1 bar. You got that? 14.5 PSI equal 1 So when you talk about somebody, say 1 bar, 1.5 bar, whatever, that's just kind of a coarse adjustment. But basically what they're saying is uh, 2 atmospheres at sea level if it's 2 bar. You got it? I just want to make sure you got that. Okay, let me ask you this. If you're thinking about uh, weight and stuff, uh, if I said something weighed a gram, let's say I was a, a really a pretty girl, and the way you answered this question was going to determine whether you got a date or not. I say, hey, how much is a gram? And, and you're, you're thinking, hey, you want some drugs or what? No, I just want to know how much a gram is. You know, <coughs> tell me what a gram is. How would you? Just, I mean, give me a give me a household way to describe a gram. The weight on there for the time balance or like a gram or maybe whatever. Well, well, that's not where I was going. If if you got to have, if you give a, you know, how much, how much is, how much is a, a cubic centimeter? How big is that? A cc. I used to know this, but I don't know. What is uh, uh, you know, can you think of the size of a 10 millimeter wrench? All right, if you imagine a cube that size, that is a cubic centimeter, right? Okay, so a cubic centimeter of water weighs one gram. If you can weigh a cubic centimeter of water, it would weigh one gram. If you have a regular size paper clip, it weighs one gram. So now you've answered the question, but I had to give you the answer so you didn't get the date with the girl I was talking about, who she was. Okay? But you did. You crashed the bird. No, I'm already married. I don't need a date. Okay. So. <laughs> All right, so... Anyway, uh, in a, uh, you know, pressure is measured in kilopascals. In a hydraulic system, an increase in force means an increase in speed and distance. Hmm. 
an increase in force. Now, what are we talking about there? Let's talk about this. Remember what we talked about the other day with the brakes? If I increase, like if I'm put, if I'm gonna put a certain amount of force in here, and I'm using hydraulics to increase that force over here, it's gonna is it gonna move faster and farther over here than it does over here? See, this is the input. This is an input, and I'm not drawing a, any other picture than this because I want you to just think about it this way. Input one pound of pressure. Yes, this one will move faster. Okay, this one over here, the output is gonna be four pounds. The pressure. In other words, this when I put this over here, is this piston over here going to move farther and faster than that one? No. Heck no, that's impossible because you're trading something. This piston over here, think about it, is only this big. And you got it, you got a land snake in over here to this one, and it's this big. Okay, so this one is not going to move but one fourth as fast. It's going to move one fourth as far but it's going to have four times as much power. That's how hydraulics operates. That's Pascal's law. You can't compress fluid. Interesting because fluid will expand when it gets hot, but you can't compress it. So you, can, if you just can't squeeze fluid. So how did he get four pounds? Uh, you're putting one pound in here. See, this is four times as big as that. Oh, okay. So that's, what you're, that's where your math is coming okay. in. If this is four times as big as that, it's going to move four times. It's going to move one fourth as much with four times as much pressure, but it's only going to move one fourth as far. Now, if you move this, if you move this one inch, this is going to move a quarter of an inch. Oh, okay. But it's going to have a tremendous amount of strength when it does four times as much as you're putting it over here. Okay. And that's what your hydraulics is about. That's why you got this little bitty master cylinder piston that moves about that far, and you got a brake, a big, you know, that moves barely at all, but it's huge in your you know, but back here on your uh, little wheel cylinders, you know, they got to move farther. They're going to move farther, basically, because of the way the, they're little. And, you know, they, yeah, they use that, that. That pistons are bigger. They have two pistons sometimes. They give you twice as much area. It's kind of like two valves per cylinder or whatever. All right, so let's move on with this. Without a functioning vent, the pump cannot circulate transmission fluid from the reservoir. Everybody knows that transmissions have got a vent. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to, the air's got to go somewhere if you're going to move the fluid, right? And you're also got to have atmospheric pressure available to push the, see what I'm saying? Let me, think about what I'm talking about here now. Look at this. Okay. There's a couple of things that work right here. You got a glass, you got a straw, you got liquid, and you got your mount. Right? First you gotta seal around that straw. And for some reason or another, this liquid goes through this straw into your mouth. Doesn't it? Why does that happen? Wait a minute, what do you have to do physically to make that happen? You have to make the you have to make the place inside your mouth smaller, you know, yeah, yeah, you and then you're going to make it bigger. Then you're going to make the inside bigger. What does that do? That causes the pressure inside your mouth to get lower than the atmospheric pressure pushing on this liquid, and the atmospheric pressure pushing on the liquid pushes that into your mouth. The pump works the same way. You got to have atmospheric pressure pushing on the fluid. And see, that's a couple of reasons the vent's there. One of the reasons the vent's there, too, is because as the fluid expands, it's got to have somewhere to go. And if it's got nowhere to go, if that, if that vent gets stopped up, it'll blow the seals. And that's what happens on, rear, on differentials. If the vent gets stopped up, it'll blow the, the seals in the differential. Let me ask you this. If you have a differential that you can tell it's on a truck that has never been, uh, like on this Chevrolet truck that we were looking at the other day, uh, it's, you can tell it has never leaked, like it, well, the college truck that... Put the rooms off in there, please. Wait on it. So you're not going to come in here? Yeah. Tell him to keep waiting. Yeah, he, he, he can wait. This is more important than that. Yeah. This is a bad time for that. I don't like that. You know, hey, I'm going to do this and skip class just because I want to help this guy with these rims. That's stupid. But anyway, um, this thing right here, what we got going on right here is we got a, we got this vent business. If I've got this rear end and it's, uh, if, is there any need to check the grease in the rear end if you can tell it has never leaked? 
Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean it's, it hasn't. There's no oil anywhere. You see oil anywhere? You know it's a truck that hadn't ever had the rear end worked on, and you know that it. And you've been. Let's say you've been working on this truck since it was a brand new truck, mm -hmm. and it's got like a hundred thousand miles on it. Yeah. And the, you know the rear end is here. They've got a little bit of grease in it, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's got a vent and all that. And uh, so over a period of time, uh, you're thinking, well, you know, do I need to check this I rear end? What would cause you to blow grease out the vent? Well, the grease is not going to blow out the vent typically unless it's too full. But what we wound up with on this truck the other day, and it's a, you're making you're even good answers. I'm not you know tearing you down, but doesn't it uh, break down? It can evaporate. What about your oil? Oil can evaporate over time. It can evaporate, and leave out the vent. And so well, yeah, when I was showing one of these high school guys, I said, let's take the plug out of the side of the rear end, and let's take a screwdriver and stick it in there because it's supposed to be you know just a little bit 40 millimeters below the hole. How far is that? So show me where your finger about 40 millimeters is. No, that's 10 millimeters. Look at the size of a 10 millimeter wrench, buddy. Think about it. <laughs> okay, so 40 millimeters is what, about that far? It's supposed to be that far below the hole. But this one here is actually farther than that. But it wouldn't leak. No, it wasn't leaking. But I mean, we, we had to add some fluid to it. Synthetic fluid, yeah. But anyway, like I say, you're going to see some power steering sometimes. If, even though it hadn't been leaking, you may find a power steering low. Because of evaporation, you know. I mean, it, a lot of people don't even think about that. They think oil can't evaporate. Well, if oil doesn't evaporate, why does oil dry work? You know, this granular stuff you throw on the floor that's made out of clay, and it soaks up the oil, and then the oil goes away. If oil didn't evaporate, that oil dry wouldn't work, would it? Think about that. Something else I was talking about: the little chamber that the final drive is in in this Toyota transmission, like the one on this stand out here. That little chamber in there is a separate oil chamber from where the dipstick is. You can, like on a Toyota Camry or a Corolla, you know, that, you know, you can pull the, let's say, you know, late 80s, mid 90s, all the way up, you know, to like 98. Now, I don't know what they've got in there, and I hadn't researched this up through the OOs, but, uh, but you know, A140E transaxle, you pull the dipstick and it's full of fluid, and you think, hey, I'm fine. Cool. But in that gear area, in the area where the gears go, where the CV axle snap in, that's a separate oil chamber. So you have to like, Two yeah, you do, and people don't think about that. Nobody checks that. You raise a Toyota up, you get under there, you'll see a plug you're supposed to take out, and stick your finger in there and see if you can touch oil. Alan Cobb's uh, wife was driving a, uh, well, he was, him and her was one pot on it, but it was a 80, uh, 97 Camry, and it had a little bit of an oil leak trickling from the uh, where the CV axles go in. And he was seeing that oil on the floor of the garage, but he didn't know where it was coming from. But he'd pull the transmission dipstick, and it was full. I don't know where this is coming from. I'm not going low on oil. I'm not going low on transmission fluid. No dipstick I pull is ever going low on oil, but I got oil on the floor. So I go over here, pull that little plug out. That thing is almost out of grease. Well, you know what happens when it runs out of oil? You drive down the road, and this happened with a couple of students coming here one day on a little red Corolla. They were coming around the bypass, coming to school, and all of a sudden, <laughs> it slid. They slid right off the side of the road. Because the, the final drive is locked up solid. It was like somebody slammed on the brakes. <laughs> I'm telling you, without any warning. Imagine this happening in 80 mile an hour traffic in Atlanta or something. You see where I'm going with that? And see, Cobb, almost, it almost happened to him because he, you know, he has no inkling that he's supposed to check that. I mean, customer can't check it. There ain't much in there. You get a little bit of a leak. You know, where the seals are leaking, where the CV axles pop in. You better be looking into that, buddy. That's really important. Anyway, I kind of got off on a tangent, but that son of a gun's got a vent on it too. Periodically, it needs to be checked. You're not giving somebody, you're not doing anybody justice when you do a vehicle inspection and you're checking it all over. Let's say that, uh, you know, Billy Bob brings his car and he goes, "Hey, my daughter's going to be driving to Birmingham, you know, and it's lost." And you're going over it. Yeah, well, the brakes look good, the tires look good, the front end part looks good. You know, everything's cool. I don't see anything going on here and all that. Kind of, but you're not paying any attention or thinking about that, and so. You know, she's halfway to Birmingham, the rear end locks up in it, and, you know, Dad's going to say, hey, you told me you checked this thing out. What's up with that? Well, you dropped the ball. See what I'm saying? Make yourself aware of this, and that's what I'm... There's a ton of people that don't know that. There's people that turn wrenches every day and change oil in cars every day and check cars out every day that have no inkling about what I just told you. Don't have any foggiest idea. Huh? Well, when that one locked up, uh, and I was... And I we bought another transmission... And uh, uh, Lester, uh, well, Johnny Williams, he brought the other transmission over here. We bought it from him. And um, 
he was saying that you know you know of course we were looking at this when it was full and you could see kind of what had happened but when Johnny put it on the floor he says make sure the oil in this front part of this thing is full it's not hard to see there's a big old plug there yeah. that you pull out but nobody ever thinks about it because you can pull the dipstick and Johnny was saying he says every time I sell one of these transmissions to a shop I have to tell them to make dead gum sure that this chamber is full of oil and he says that they don't have no idea what I'm talking about they want to argue with me about it but that sucker's got to be full of oil even if you got good transmission oil in there, it ain't all in with the same stuff. So, but anyway, I just want to make y'all aware of it. Huh? Was it I think if I'm not mistaken, it uses transmission grease, but I could be wrong. I gotta remember. I don't remember. You Seems like it. Day? It may be. Used, yeah, look it up on all that. I mean, I'm, I don't want to lie to you about that, but uh, I'm gonna tell you the truth. It probably uses 90 weight because them high point gears. No. No, I probably use those aren't high point gears. Those are actually uh, helical cut gears, so it's probably gonna use automatic transmission fluid. But make sure that you know what it goes because the differential area is what you're going to do. I got the same transmission in my other car. Yeah. I got to get up down. That's it. It's going to be locked up while you're in traffic getting 90 miles an hour. All right. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, just always think about that. And you can look on this one out here and see what I'm talking about, you know. Mm -hmm. And when you get a Toyota Camry or a Corolla on the left, have a look at that. Uh, pumps create fluid pressure. Yes. Faults. They move fluid, they don't create pressure. The pressure's got to be pushed against a regulator valve with a spring behind it in order for fluid, fluid to have to be that fluid pressure. All right. Now, we all know how a regulator works, right? This is a simplified version of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a passage like this. And I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a piston in here, like this right here, and like that. And I'm going to put a stem on it, and I'm going to put a spring around it, like that right there. All right, right here, I'm going to put a hole in the side of that passage. And when this moves, when the pressure, the fluid pressure is coming in here, when this moves far enough back, you're building pressure, building pressure, building pressure. When this moves far enough back to where it can vent, then you got the amount of pressure. If you wanted to raise the amount of pressure you'd have, you could stretch this spring or put a couple of washers under it. You know, like on, that's, where, that's the way the oil pressure, oil pump relief valve works in your regular engine oil lube system. And the oil pumps like the one that uh, V8s have on them, you know, your 350 and all these, yeah. that's built into the pump. And like a Toyota Camry, it's built into the front cover where the oil pump is. It's in a different area. But it's, if that thing sticks, you ain't got no oil pressure. You know, if it sticks so that it's back here and this hole's covered up all the time, yeah, the pump's working, but you got no oil pressure. So pumps don't create fluid pressure, but without the pump working, you won't have any pressure. You see what I'm saying? So the all pumps are removed for service require a visual inspection. That's a kind of dumb question. Of course you're going to inspect it. You're going to look and see what's going on there. Most valves in an automatic transmission are check valves. <laughs> Wrong. Those are they're spool valves, right? Spool valves being mainly similar to what is drew up here, except they've got more than one land on all that stuff. Um, lands, valleys, face, and spring are all parts of a typical spool valve. Lands, valleys, face, and spring. Lands, valleys. Okay, look at this, fellas. See that? All right. That's a spool valve. And here's a spring. And this rides in a board. And those valves, will, when you bring your clean up valve body, that thing better be just to drop all the way in there and, and come all the way back out real easy. If it ever sticks the teeniest little bit, you'd be surprised how that'll make everything go south. So, but anyway, this is a valley, that's a land, this is a face. See where I'm going with that? That's a spring. Everybody clear, everybody clear on that? A gerotor pump may have a constant displacement or a variable displacement. That is false. What kind of pump is variable displacement sometimes? What are the three kinds of pumps that we got? And I need to show you guys that video. Don't you just love watching the videos? Ain't that great? Yeah, you know? yeah that's it. Since he didn't know what kind of pumps are, we got to watch another 30 minutes worth of videos when I'm through here. That's good, ain't it? I don't know what kind of pump is. You know what a gerotor gero pump is one that's got... Let me see if I can show you one here. This is actually a fall pump right here. This right here is an oil pump off a Toyota Camry. <coughs> See that? See that? 
That is a gerotor pump. Now this this gonna see how you got you got five little uh, areas in there. You got only four on here. See when it turns, that thing's gonna move. It's gonna grab some oil, and when it turns around to where the oil is where it can get away, get out of there, it's gonna shove it out of there. That's where you're. You know, that's sort of how you're moving your oil. The relief valve, incidentally, on this one's over here. Now that's all. That's off on a Toyota Camry engine right there. That's the oil pump. But that's a jet rotor. You've seen those. You used to know what they were. Now they actually have also a crescent gear pump, and they'll actually have a they'll have a gear, a big round gear with inside teeth on it, and they'll have a crescent that doesn't move. And then inside here, and it's perfectly round, I'm not drawing this exactly right, over on one side they'll have a, a gear that's smaller that meshes with those. And as it turns, you know, that's an oil pump too. That's a great, you'll see one, you'll see a better picture than what I'm drawing here. I don't have time to draw that really good. I really ought to have some cards to hold up or something, but I didn't have any of them. Finally, you'll have a pump that's got veins. And it'll have a ring. And all that, and this thing right here can actually has got is mounted in a little carrier with a spring so that it can move, and this vein pump will be the one that's variable displacement. And what causes a new pump to go out? What causes a new pump to go out? Mm -hmm. Usually, if you got some kind of uh, trash coming out of some like metal filings coming out of worn out parts that you know they're smaller than the screen, unfiltered oil. The pump is the only thing that gets unfiltered oil. And if you got anything, if you got anything, that's actually turned by the timing belt on that one. This one is? Yeah, that one is. But, uh, but if you got any kind of uh, metal filings or something in your oil pan, and they can get past that screen and go up into that pump, they'll wipe it out. So it's unfiltered, by, except for the ones that that screen, and that screen's kind of not very fine, you see. Okay, balance valve can be controlled by hydraulic pressure, spring pressure, or both. And that is true. So... You're going to see some diagrams on that eventually. Which of the following is not an advantage of using hydraulics? A, flexibility. B, force multiplication. C, high pressure. Or D, simplicity. D. High pressure is not an advantage of using hydraulics. Hydraulics, so hydraulics are pretty simple. Now, if you look at a, if you pull a valve body off of an automatic transmission, you might think, oh my gosh, this is horrible. Whoever came up with this nonsense, you know, because it looks like a maze. But that's not, you know, actually the four, I mean, the principles behind hydraulics are fairly, are fairly simple. Uh, you know, the problem with hydraulics is that high pressure has a tendency to bust things and blow things and cause stuff to leak and, and all that kind of stuff. See what I'm saying? So if that's one of the, that's not an advantage. It's something you're using, but it's not an advantage, see? It's better if you can use low pressure, but with hydraulics, you have to have high pressure sometimes and you need stuff that can handle that high pressure. Which one? Which one? The gray one? The gray one? Yeah. Oh, the gray one's low on oil. Low if it won't go up very high, it's low on oil. Yeah, you got to put some oil. I got some jack oil in there. Isn't it? But um, which of the following statements is true about a remote cylinder with a piston surface half the area, half the size of the input piston? In other words, if you've got a remote cylinder, well, look at there. There's the Daigle. Uh, the remote cylinder with a piston surface area half the size of the input piston, what's true? Does it deliver twice the output force? Do I need to draw this so we can make sure. Hold on, we can get this one right now. Watch this. Here's our input piston. Right, this is our foot right here. Right there. We're going to push on that with our foot. Okay, and there's your input piston. And I probably should make that circular like that if I move it right. All right. This has got a line going over here. And this one is the output piston. Except the front of this would be. I kept right there. All right. What's true about this drawing right here? What's true about it? Huh? Does it deliver twice the output force? Here's your output. Here's your input. Twice the output force? Does it travel twice the distance of the input piston? Does it travel half the speed of the input piston? Or does it travel the same distance? Well, we talked about that a few minutes ago. Now. No, it's reverse. Now it's the big piston pushing the small. Okay, good thought. 
Oh, yeah. No, wait a minute. No, you don't remember twice the output of force. It can't. It's going to be C. It's, it's going to be B. B. It goes twice as far. It's not going to travel at half the speed. It's going to go twice as fast. But it's half the size. It's not going to travel the same distance, and it's not going to deliver twice the output force. You put you put you put one pound in. You put one pound in here. You get a half a pound over there, basically. You know what I'm saying? One pound here, half pound over there, and all that. I've got a big exercise. I give you. It's got a automatic transmission math. You know, and it talks about force and. and that, you like that? Yeah. You know, use an automatic. Right, right, right. Oh, come on now. All right. Which of the following statements is not true about a remote cylinder with a piston surface area twice the size of the input piston? What's not true? Who knows? Which is not true about a remote cylinder with a piston twice the size of the input? In this case, we got an input piston, we got an output piston, like that, like that, connected by a line. All right, talk to me. Does it deliver twice the force? Yes. Does it travel twice as far? No. Does it travel half the speed and half as far? That's got to be a B. Any way you cut it, that's a B, right? 14. The most common type of automatic transmission pump is the... Basically, it's the gear pump, according to this book. According to this book, now, I don't know when that question was written and all that, but you know I've seen quite a few uh, gyrotor pumps, you know, and uh, these uh, front-wheel drive transmissions, a lot of them have got uh, vein, uh, variable displacement vein pumps on them. Question number fifteen: Which of the following valves used in an automatic transmission controls the direction of fluid flow? That would be switching valve, spring-operated ballast valve, hydraulically operated ballast valve, or check valve. Controls the direction of fluid flow. Let me tell you what that means. Okay. Let's say, and we're just going to draw a valve here. That we're not going to tell you what's inside of it. And we're going to bring pressure in here. And depending on what this valve does, the pressure could go this way, or it could go that way. Check valve. No, a check valve is actually keeps it from going backwards. You know what I mean? Sort of, I can see where you're coming from with your answer, but what we're looking at here is we're looking for a valve that depending on other sources, it can cause fluid to go one of two directions. A check valve doesn't do that. What a check valve does is it lets fluid flow freely that way, but it won't let it go back the other way. And that's kind of what, see that question is poorly written because of the way that, the well, way you're thinking, I get where you're going with that, but you know the little ball that rolls over the uh, holes in your separator plate, you know, those are like check valves. Uh, but this particular one here would be, was going to direct fluid in one of two directions. You got pressure coming in all the time. You see, just like, think about, when you think about a, a toggle switch, it's got two terminals, like, a, like this relay over here, got two terminals going out of it, and you got one terminal coming in. That's what you're talking about here. This is, uh, it's really something how these uh, schematics on the automatic transmission valve bodies and, and stuff in your uh, hydraulic is kind of like following wiring schematics if you drag your fingers to them. The difference is you can't just tap into it anywhere and check to see if you got voltage in there. Pressure coming in. This is a switching valve, you guys. That's why I was trying to use the analogy of a switch because, you know, you're going to cause things to happen. And see, there will be another uh, something else is controlling this switching valve. You know, this just moving it back and forth. So pressure coming in is going to be directed either that way or that way based on where the valve's at. And all that. And see, you'll see the little, if you don't see this schematic in the diagram, you'll see how that works. Everybody got that? Is that all of your questions? Huh? That's it, isn't it? Yes, sir. Fifteen questions. All right. Everybody happy with that? You confused? Huh? Yes, I got one for you. I got all of your stuff right here, Nick. Oh, by the way, I put some more uh, bins over here. I noticed that yesterday.